architects. Today, we are going to talk about what is the Power BI architecture and how important it is to create an effective and robust architecture within our organization. So without any delay, let's get started. So here, as you see in this particular diagram, we see how this uh, high level overview of a Power BI architecture can be designed, right? So before we even understand this particular raw diagram, uh, first we'll like, uh, we would like to understand what is an architecture and how important it is to design an effective architecture. So designing a robust uh, BI platform is something which is like a bridge. So where a bridge that connects a transformed data or a transformed uh, and enriched source data to the data consumers, right? So if I have to relate to this particular diagram here, we have uh, data coming in from different data sources. So this data would need to be brought into Power BI desktop where you build some appealing, visually appealing uh, visualizations. So now once you build your reports, you will need to share this with your consumers who actually use the reports and the data within it and are able to make a um, wiser decision that would be helpful for the respective organization, correct? So in order to do that, we would need to have a, a robust BI platform being designed that helps us to scale and leverage the flexibility of connecting to different data sources and are able to accomplish the different business needs that comes in from different uh, businesses. So there would be different uh, specific demands. So first we would need to understand what are our organization specific demands when we try to uh, come up with the best architecture design that is well uh, needed for that particular business. Now, specifically, we might need to look at how scalable and how it is uh, able to perform to meet the business expectations. And also, we would need to consider the security topic. So, which means that it should be secure from the uh, initial stage itself. So, whatever architecture that we uh, try to design or uh, develop within the organization, we would need to consider the scalability and its performance along with the security topics on a very high priority. So we also talk about the governance, right? So these are all part of the security topic and this is quite crucial in any organization. So it's not related just to a BI architecture, but um, uh, with any architecture that we come up with, right? These are some of the key pillars of uh, designing the respective platform. Now, here in this particular high level overview diagram, right? We see that the data comes in from various data sources. So the data might come from a, a flat file system or from a different databases like uh, Oracle or SQL or uh, uh, any other uh, flat uh, RDBMS data source, right? So you can just connect to n number of or uh, different types of uh, data sources and uh, uh, these data sources are uh, imported within Power BI Desktop in which you try to perform some uh, uh, transformations or try to do some ETL uh, uh, transformations that would enrich your data and bring in the required transform data for your visualization part. So for this purpose, we use this uh, inbuilt ETL that comes in with Power BI Desktop, which is the Power Query Editor. So Power Query Editor is nothing but an inbuilt ETL tool that comes within the Power BI Desktop application. And you by making use of this particular Power BI Query Editor, you are able to make uh, some important transformations on top of your data. And based on that transform data, you can create some beautifully appealing visualizations as needed by the business. Okay, so then uh, you might also need to write some DAX queries within Power BI to help you attain the business logic in your respective visual. So for that, you use a DAX functions or a DAX expression. So DAX stands for data analysis expressions. 
So there are a lot of functions that have been uh, provided within Power BI Desktop and this is something similar to that of your Excel as well. So if you're already familiar uh, using with Excel uh, spreadsheet where you write in some functions to uh, accomplish your business logic, that should be able to uh, uh, help you to get started within Power BI as well. So DAX expressions would help you to write some custom business logic to uh, make you uh, take a better decision that is needed for the business. Okay, so uh, once you connect your data within Power BI Desktop, what do you do? You try to transform your data and then you can also write some tax expressions to uh, come up with your respective business logic. And you are also allowed to do some modeling within Power BI Desktop. So like I said, you can connect to different types of data sources within Power BI Desktop. Now, when you bring in many data sources, there would be certain scenario where you would like to do this analysis on a combined data set. Like for example, one data might be from a Excel spreadsheet and the other data source might be stored in a SQL server. And maybe the third one might come from an uh, Azure SQL server. Now, by combining these three data sources, you might need to present some visually, uh, some business logic being implemented in a report. So for that, you would have to do some data modeling. So that can be achieved within Power BI Desktop itself. So you can go to the data model view and there you can uh, specify or define the relationships uh, among these three different tables. And based on the cardinality and the relationship that you specify, you would be able to look at that uh, corresponding uh, resultant data which would help you to bring in onto your respective visual, okay? So you can do the data modeling, you can also do the uh, ETL transformations, and you can also apply some custom business logic using the DAX expressions. So all of these features are provided within Power BI Desktop, okay? So now, once you develop your reports that is needed for your end user, you might need to share these reports to consume by the respective uh, management. In order to do so, you would need to publish those reports from Power BI Desktop onto the Power BI service. So now this Power BI service is a cloud environment, which is a SaaS model. So SaaS offering is nothing but software as a service. And this has been maintained by, or rather uh, this has been provided by Microsoft and therefore, uh, once you store or uh, publish the report on the Power BI service, the based on the uh, access privileges that you might have granted to the respective users, they would be allowed to look at that specific content on the Power BI service. Okay, so this is important. If you would like to share your reports that have been developed on Power BI desktop to a wider audience within your organization or perhaps even outside of your organization. So that depends on how you wish to uh, design your architecture and how you'd like to uh, make this data being available for your end customers. Now, let's say that some part of your data is still located on your on-premises, right? So since I said that Power BI service is something located on the cloud, that's on the Azure cloud, now, when you connect to the data source that is located within your organization network, right? And when you have such data source being connected, you might need to make sure that your data is always up to date, correct? So you do not want to show something which is uh, uh, like, uh, which has not been updated from the past few days or uh, since the report has been developed, right? So, uh, this particular report that you develop in Power BI Desktop should always be the source of truth for your end customers who are actually consuming the data through your reports that you develop. So therefore, it is quite essential that your reports are always up to date, which means that they would need to be refreshed at a specific time interval based on how soon or uh, how often the data within that particular data source are being refreshed. So for that particular uh, situation, if in specifically, if your data source is located on your on-premises, 
that is within your organization network, then you might need to use another concept called Power BI Gateways. Now, this Power BI Gateways act as an interface to uh, get the data from the on-prem data source and update it within your reports on your Power BI service. Okay, so there are two types of Power BI Gateways again. So by default, you would, uh, you would have a personal gateway where you can make use of it, where you just install and configure for your own purpose. But when it is uh, for an enterprise-wide uh, usage, right, uh, your Power BI admin team or the ops team within your Power BI team would configure a Power BI gateway that is consumable by the uh, within the organization. So making use of these Power BI gateways would allow you to refresh your data that is located on your on-premises network to that of your cloud environment. So which would help you to make sure that your reports are always up to date and refreshed and make sure that the data is then made available to your end customers. Now, now when it comes to Power BI service again, we spoke that we would need to grant access to the customers, to the users who actually need to access to your reports on the server. Now, how do they access to it? So there are different types of licenses that are available. So we have a free license and then we have a pro license and then we also have a premium capacity. Now let's understand these three now. So the free license would allow you as a user you, if you are a developer, you can just publish your report from Pub, uh, Power BI Desktop to Power BI Service. And using this free license, uh, you are able to publish that uh, uh, workbook within your uh, own workspace. So on the Power BI Service, there are two separate types of folders. One is called as a personal workspace and the other one is the uh, enterprise or uh, the uh, uh, the premium uh, capacity workspace okay so if you uh, just wanted to store all your workbooks within your own uh, like um, for your own private use you can publish that workbook within your personal workspace to which you can just have a free license okay but if the other colleagues in the project would need to access to that particular report they will not be allowed to access it now you would be able to share that particular report to that particular user in that case you would need a pro license on the service that is on the power bi service so only if you have a power bi pro license you will not be allowed to publish that to the premium capacity nor the other users who would like to access to your reports would be able to uh, consume it so both the developer who is your report developer and the consumer of the report, both of them should have a pro license. Okay. And there is a cost um, allocated to that particular pro license as well. And then we have this premium capacity. So premium capacity is for a, a large enterprise organizations where if your uh, usage or the user base is quite high and if you'd like to deal with a large volume of data set, then you can opt for a premium capacity on that particular Power BI service. Now, since I mentioned that Power BI service is a cloud-based environment, uh, this has been made available to all the users and different organizations as well. So by default, without a premium capacity, you would be allocated to a shared capacity, which means that along with you, along with your respective organization, there would be another XYZ organization who would also be allowed to access to the same cloud service. And however, uh, your data is not visible to the other organization and vice versa because of the user uh, access that has been restricted based on how you publish and grant access right and you will not be able to look at those particular uh, data so the data security is still there that has been levied by the microsoft itself however you would need to ensure that uh, or you would need to make a decision like how uh, big is your uh, usage on the power bi service and how many users would you expect to 
consume the reports on the power bi service based on that you can just calculate the amount that would be uh, uh, like uh, the uh, the costing element like uh, since i said every user should have a pro license right now you can calculate like if your total number of users would be 100 then how much will that be costing to on a monthly basis similarly with a premium capacity and within premium capacity you do have different SKUs, uh, like uh, based on how much capacity you would need on that power bi service depending on that the cost would be varied and you can calculate to make a comparison to see which one would fit best to your organization okay so premium capacity is a dedicated capacity which is uh, from the entire server space you get a dedicated amount of resources assigned to your or allocated to your respective organization okay so this is how you have different types of uh, roles and uh, licenses on the power bi service okay so this is all about the Power BI service. Now, once you have all these uh, permissions and licenses being uh, uh, allocated, your consumers would have the respective access to either to with the Power BI premium capacity or with the pro license. However, it is they would be able to access to your reports with the up to date data using their desktop or using the Power BI mobile app on their respective mobile applications. So this is all about the Power BI architecture. Okay, so just to give a recap. So uh, in any architecture, the key elements to consider are how is the scalability of that particular architecture? How flexible enough it is to include additional services that you might need to bring in in the future? And also the security topic. How secure is your architecture that you have designed for? Okay, so these are the three key uh, pillars for any architecture that you consider okay so now in this particular diagram if you see we usually connect to uh, different types of data that comes in from different data sources and connecting uh, using the power bi desktop application you bring in these data sources uh, and the data and within power bi desktop you have this privilege to do the data modeling by defining the relationships among those tables and you can also do the etl transformations using the power query editor and you can also write dax expressions to uh, create a custom business logic that is needed for your reporting now once your reports have been developed within power bi desktop you would need to publish that on the Power BI service, which is a cloud environment from uh, Microsoft, which is a SaaS offering. And once you publish that on the Power BI service, you would need to grant access to the respective users who needs to look at that particular data in the reports. In this, we have again, uh, different types of licenses uh, categories, uh, the free license, pro license, and the premium capacity. Depending on the usage and the user base within your organization, you can choose the respective licenses. Okay. And we also have the Power BI gateways. So gateways help us to bridge the data uh, that comes in from the on-premises network to that of your uh, Power BI service located on the Azure cloud to help you refresh the data in within your reports. Okay. So when you have your data source, located within your organization on-premises network. And uh, since your report has been hosted on the Power BI service, you might need to ensure that the refresh is being enabled. It's allowing your data to update according to your data source. So for that, this Power BI gateway would act as an intermediate layer to help you refresh the data within your respective reports. And then, you would need to grant access to the customers like your end users who would need to consume the data within your reports using your, uh, they might either use their respective desktop or a mobile application uh, through which they can quickly uh, locate to that respective report and get some business insights out of it. So I hope you understood all about this Power BI architecture. So in the next video, we will be looking at a, an interesting topic. So until then, keep learning.